Welcome back to COS3D, and I want to talk about something today that is actually pretty boring at times, but it's super important when you're trying to finish up your 3D prints. So stay tuned because today we're going to talk about sanding and sandpaper. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to want to hear some of this. Before I dive into the video today, I just want to say that there are a lot of you out there that are watching these videos, and I hope you find them helpful but you're not subscribed to the channel, if you wanna support this channel for free, please hit that like and subscribe. Leave a comment, ask a question, because that helps us with the algorithm. So let's get started on this project. So why am I making this video? Recently, I got an email from a guy named Ben, and Ben was having some trouble with the 3D print, and I'm just gonna read you the email that he sent me. Dear Kyle, I hope this finds you well. I've been watching your videos from the very early days, and you've inspired me to build a Darth Vader helmet. I purchased the files and have been sanding on this thing off and on for over a month, and I cannot achieve the same results as I see you do in your videos. What am I doing wrong? I'm about to throw this thing out in frustration. Is it the print? Is it just that hard? Please give me some advice because I need your help. Thank you so much for your time, Ben. So I've been talking to Ben via email back and forth and we've been talking about sanding. That's the key, prep work for your print. And I just got all of my sanding stuff out here, not even all of it, to be honest with you. I threw it all out here on the table and we're gonna go over some of this real quickly. And some of it, not as quickly. Let's get started, first of all, with we solved Ben's problem. Ben's problem was he was using the wrong sandpaper. He was using the wrong grit and he was using the wrong sanding device that we'll talk about in a minute. And he was using really, really cheap sandpaper. And it turns out that was his whole problem because once he actually went out and bought some better equipment, he instantly saw better results. So we need to go over this. One of the biggest things when I do my build videos is you kind of see me fly through it. I take about, you know, four to six hours and I chop it down into 10 to 15 minutes of a video. I don't think that that's fair to you guys. So let's just start with sanding devices to begin with. And the devices that I like the most, at least the powered ones, are the orbit sanders that I use. Now, let's start with the most basic one right here. This is a foot scrubber, a foot sander to take calluses off of your feet. I got this off of Amazon. I want to say at the time I bought it, it was like 10 bucks. It might be up to 15, maybe $12 now, but I will link as much of this as I can down in the description. I want to first talk about this foot sander. It comes with more pads on them. They're, they're sticky pads, self-adhesive self pads that you stick onto this tool. And it's one of the most basic sanders that I own other than just plain sandpaper. It's got one speed and it just rotates. And you can go forwards, or you can go clockwise or counterclockwise. But what I use this for, it's an 80 grit pad, so it's very aggressive, but it doesn't spin that fast. And what I would use this for, I pulled this out of the uh, recycle bin on a failed print, but what this is the best thing for are places like this, where you can't maybe get a random orbit sander into safely without tearing it up. It just gets in there and it just eats up the print lines. And it's slow and it's time consuming, but sometimes speed's not always the key. And I use this a lot off camera that you don't see when I'm making my videos. So let's move over to the next one. And that's just a palm sander. And this one just goes back and forth. It's not super aggressive either. It can get you into some of those hard to reach places. I use this a lot on the cheeks, on the Mandalorian helmets, because the orbital sander won't actually fit in those areas. This one again is not my favorite sander, but it's just a necessary sander. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you buy one of these unless you're doing a lot more finishing on 3D prints. It's one of those tools in my arsenal. So let's talk about my two favorite sanders that I have. And I've actually got multiples of these and I've got them labeled for different grits. I don't even change out the pads anymore on if I'm gonna use 
For example, this one's an 80 grit. If I'm gonna to go to a 220, I actually have more of these sitting over there. They're relatively inexpensive. They're Bauer brand. You can get them at Harbor Freight. Uh, the batteries, of course, are all interchangeable. And most of the time, the sander itself might be around $25, give or take. The batteries are a little bit more expensive, but here's the cool thing. You can buy one battery. It's always better to have two, but you can get one battery and run all of these different sanders with just a single battery. This one is by far my favorite. This is the one you see me probably in the videos use the most of because it's the most versatile in my opinion. So let's talk about my second favorite sander at this point. That would be my variable speed sander. Now, unfortunately this one's corded. I'm not as big of a fan of the cord, but it does allow me to slow this sander down or speed it up. I don't use it as much, but there are times that this is the sander I need, especially if I've put down, for example, recently in the last video, I built the dark helmet and off camera, I didn't show it, but after I had hand sanded it, I had some spots that I needed to get into a little better, but I had already glazed it with the Bondo spot putty. When I went back in with this one, I turned the speed way down, like almost to what it would be to hand sand it and I gently worked down the glazing that I had on there so that I didn't eat too much. I didn't want to get back to too far into the plastic of the material the, of the dome itself. This is another one that really comes in handy. Not my favorite favorite, but comes in with a close second. One thing we need to talk about is the quality of the sandpaper that you're using. This particular piece of sandpaper, I've used this once and it gummed up almost immediately. So it's actually a very cheap brand, probably one that came with one of those sanders that I just purchased at some point. I grabbed it, I used it, it was horrible. I don't wanna use it anymore. I recommend, it is a little more pricey, but this pack here of 80 grit, there are 15 discs in it. It is a Diablo brand and I have less gum up with this. There's better pads out there that you can use and there are a lot crappier pads out there that you can use. But my personal preference is the Diablo. I get more sanding out of these pads than I do any other pad that I have because they have some kind of silica in them that doesn't allow, as the plastic gets hot and you're sanding it, these don't tend to heat up as much. So they actually shoot tiny little balls of plastic off away from the project that you're working on. Quality of your sandpaper is actually key on this. I've used some really cheap stuff, had terrible results, and I've used some very expensive automotive grade that I've had wonderful results with. So sometimes you kind of have to find your middle ground in there. Now, if you're looking for just cheap sandpaper, Harbor Freight, sells these in the roll and they are warrior brand. These are relatively inexpensive. You pull off an amount that you need, you cut it with a pair of scissors. These are great when you're kind of just starting out on a project and you're just trying to rough it up and you're trying to just remove some material. These are cheap. I wouldn't recommend them on fit like your final sandings, but they work. So next, let's talk about sanding sticks. Again, I will link these especially in the description. These sanding sticks are great. They come in multiple grits. I usually buy a variety pack of them in four different grits. These are wonderful for parts. If you're just needing to clean up the bottom of a, of a helmet or something like that, or if for some reason you need to sand in a very tight area, these things are great to get in there and sand with. And I get asked about them a lot and I always put these in the descriptions when I use them because they are one of those things, they're so inexpensive to buy. I've got a slew of them and when I need one, I need one. You can cut them down if you need them narrower. They are very rigid. They come in handy all the time. So now that we've talked about sanding sticks, let's talk about rasps and files. These come in handy all the time. They come in a variety of shapes, sizes, everything that you would need. They're not something that I use every day on a project. And I've got a uh, rasp here that's super aggressive. So, I mean, if I have a bad print that I need to get into a tight area with, 
I might scuff this up a little bit, switch over to a less aggressive file so that I can get in there and smooth that out. Now for some of the finer details, I bought these on Amazon a while back and I was a little apprehensive because they were so inexpensive, but they've turned out to be invaluable. And I've got some other smaller ones as well that I use all the time, as you can tell. They're, they're coated in plastic and everything else. I have to clean them occasionally. Files and rasps are another good, just another good tool to have in your arsenal. Now, most importantly, if you're not gonna use any of these other tools that I've talked about, we always have to talk about sandpaper. And why do we need to talk about sandpaper? Because the quality of your sandpaper matters a lot. And so does the grit that you're using. So the idea of using sandpaper is you might start out, in a lot of my build videos, I start out with an 80 grit, which removes a lot of material very quickly. And you have to be careful. You don't want to melt your project, you don't want to warp your project, and you don't want to eat the walls to where you're getting into the infill. But when you get down to hand sanding, the sandpaper that you use matters. I will talk about a couple brands that I dislike and like. First of all, Gator Grip sandpaper, not a huge fan of because it gets gummed up quickly. It's not a bad brand because you can get it at all kinds of hardware stores and it's very inexpensive. You can buy variety packs of it and get the job done. But this is where when I was talking with Ben, this is where the problem for him started. The quality of his sandpaper just wasn't up to sanding PLA, PLA plus, or PET G plastic. Once we got that figured out, he started having great success. So let me talk about a couple of brands that I'm very fond of. I just recently started, 3M makes some of the better sandpaper. It's not the top of the line by any stretch, but it's affordable. And being affordable is important when you're sanding on a piece, you throw that sandpaper away frequently. Because once it starts to wear out, you're, you might start with a 400 grit sandpaper, and if you're gonna try to sand, hand sand an entire helmet uh, before your finishing coat of paint with a 400 grit, by the time you're all the way around to the front again of the helmet, you've actually used a lot of the intentional grit that's on this piece of sandpaper. And when that happens, you start to leave behind scratches in areas that you don't intend to leave. My absolute favorite brand is the 3M Gold. It is one of my favorites. It's got somewhat of a grip back to it. So it's not as, it's not as papery as your thin cheap stuff. And as you can tell too, I mean, this has just been sitting out for maybe an hour and it's already starting to not be flat anymore. Not that that's super important, but with the, with the 3M stuff, it typically doesn't curl. I can leave this laying on the workbench and when I come back out, it's still basically flat. It doesn't end up curling up in moisture. And that's super important. Now, if you're gonna be dry sanding or wet sanding, I like to try to get sandpaper that has the feature for both so that I don't have to buy multiple sandpapers for the, you know, the same grit. Now, when you're using sandpaper, it's always good to have a foam backing pad of some kind. And you can buy these relatively inexpensive. The quality of the foam matters, especially if you're wet sanding on a project. If you buy a super cheap foam pad, it will degrade if you're using it in water. This particular one, again, is a 3M. It was very expensive because I bought it at an automotive store. I didn't do any shopping for it. I just saw it one day, I was like, I need a new one. I bought it and I've been using this exact same pad now, dry sanding, wet sanding for probably around four or five months, it is showing no, no signs of deterioration yet. And why do we use a foam backer? Well, because when you're, when you're sanding with your fingers, a lot of times you're putting all the pressure where your fingertips are. And you can actually cause very minor grooves to form in your project. When you're using a foam pad, typically you can contour that pad and you should in theory 
have a dispersed amount of pressure as you're sanding. I'm not gonna say that the foam pad's always important to use, but because I don't always use it, but on a big project, for example, on Dark Helmet, that was one that it exponentially sped up the process because now I have this whole surface area that I'm able to get the same pressure at all times on. If you're using your hand to hold that sandpaper, you're putting pressure on different locations of your hand, especially in your palm area and your fingertips. And that does cause an uneven, ununiform sanding. So I hope this helps you out a little bit. Again, this isn't the most exciting topic that we can talk about. To be fair, a lot of times off camera when I'm doing a project, I will touch up some areas with a, with a file, with a sanding pad and things like that that I don't always show on camera. And it doesn't take me more than a minute or two. But those are the important little tidbits that you need to know about sanding. That it's not just diving in and, and just tearing it up as quick as you can. Sometimes you want to make sure that you move around your project, especially when you're using a power tool, that you don't want to stay in one place for too long. Because it will warp, it will melt, and if you damage those walls, you'll start damaging infill and you'll have a wave to it that you can't fix unless you decide to use a lot of Bondo, and that's not usually the answer for things. So thank you for joining me today. I hope this helps as you move on to your next project, because sanding and pre-finishing a project is one of the most important things that you can do, simply because if you can get all your problems out before you start putting down your coats of paint, it's gonna go a lot easier. So thanks again, and make sure you hit that like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.